Hey, what's up guys? My name is Shona. Welcome back to my C++ series. So today we're going to be talking all about type punning in C++. And type punning is really just a fancy term for just us kind of getting around the type system in C++. So C++ is a strongly typed language, which means that we have a type system. We don't declare everything as auto. I mean, we kind of can because of that keyword, but in other languages like JavaScript, there are no kind of sense of variable types really and we just have, we don't need to declare a variable type when we create a variable and when we accept it in as parameters into functions or anything like that. We don't have a type system really. But in C++, of course, we do have a type system. We have to declare things as integers or doubles or booleans or structs or classes, all of that stuff uh, when we actually create variables. However, this type system is not really enforced as strongly as it is in other languages such as Java, where it's really hard to get around types and even C Sharp, where you can do it, but it's a bit more work. In C++, whilst types are kind of enforced by the compiler, you can directly access memory, which means that you can kind of say that, hang on a minute, I know that at the moment in my code, I've been using this type as say an integer, but actually I'm gonna just grab that memory, that same memory and just treat it as a double now or as a class or something like that. And you can just get around the type system really easily. Now, whether or not you should is going to, again, depend on your actual circumstance. In some cases, you absolutely should not circumvent the type system because the type system is there for a reason and you probably don't want to be playing around with it too much unless you have a good reason. But in other cases, it's totally okay to do that. For example, let's just say we had a class and we wanted to write it out as a stream of bytes. Well, instead of kind of going through everything, assuming it's like a structure of primitive types and doesn't have pointers to other places in memory, we can just kind of reinterpret that entire struct or class or whatever we have as just a byte array and just write that out or stream it somewhere, right? We don't have to even care about what types are in it. As long as we know the size, we can just get the, get the, get the data, access it, and then just put it somewhere. So in a lot of cases, it is really useful and it means that it's kind of that raw, I guess, low level access that is why I really like C++ and why C++ is so effective in applications where performance is required. Anyway, enough talking, let's just dive in, take a look at a few examples. This is something that I use quite often, so you'll probably see it in other videos and especially like in the OpenGL series and in the game engine series and all that, so you'll see plenty of this. This is just gonna be a basic overview, but let's just dive in and see what we can do. Okay, so in that first example, I kind of declared an integer. Well, I just said that I had an integer. And then I just wanted to treat it as a double. Well, of course, in this case, that's probably gonna result in a pretty weird looking double and not something that you wanna do. But again, just to demonstrate how this works, I'll show you anyway. We're going to make a double, we're gonna call it value, and we're gonna set it equal to A. That's kind of step one. Now, first of all, you can see it works, right? Everything seems to work fine. If we were to print this out like this, and I'll even put a breakpoint over here, hit F5, you can see what we get is 50. Okay, interesting, reasonable, I guess. I mean, it converted our integer into a double now, so it's 50. Let's take a look at the memory. So I'll go debug windows memory and memory one. I'm gonna to go to the memory address of A and take a look at what is in there. Okay, cool. 32, zero, 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 zero. Okay, makes sense. 32 is 50 in hexadecimal. Now let's take a look at the memory address of value. Now, first of all, it's going to have a different memory address. But second of all, well, we know how many bytes it is. It's eight bytes. Look at that, it's completely different. I mean, 49, 49 and 40 over here and like what's going on? It's, it's not even, it's not, it's not the same memory at all because what's actually done is it's just actually done a conversion It's converted an int into a double because that's what happens if you do something like this Now in this case it was an implicit conversion meaning we didn't actually tell it to convert anything if we wanted to be explicit We could write Double a like that, which is fine. I mean it does exactly the same thing in this case We don't have to write double here because it will do an implicit conversion But if we wanted to be explicit, this is actually what's happening is converting that a from being an integer into an actual double now What if we wanted to just take that existing memory? We saw 32 and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 in our memory I want to take that same memory, but I just want that memory to be treated as a double How do I do that? Well, the first thing to do that that we need to do, there are a few ways actually, but this is the kind of raw way, I guess. We take the memory address of A, and then we cast that to a double pointer. So, um, and a double, by double pointer, I mean obviously a double pointer, not two pointers. Um, now this part here, 
is of course just taking the memory address of A. So this gives us an integer pointer. And then we're converting that int pointer into a double pointer. And then we obviously need to get back to having a double. So how do we go from pointer to the actual type? We dereference it. And that's what we get. So this is this looks a bit weird maybe if it's the first time you've seen it, but essentially what we're doing here is we're type punning our integer into a double. So if we hit F5 now, let's see what we get. Okay, so it's a pretty weird looking double. I mean, it's negative 9.2 a plus 61. So yeah, whatever. Clearly not something that we probably want to do, but again, it's just an example. If we take a look at the memory address of A, you can see that of course it has 32 like that. And if we take the memory address of B, oh sorry, of value, you can see what we have over here. Now, <laughs> what you'll also see is if you remember that we have eight bytes of double, the rest is uninitialized memory. Because what we've done here is something pretty bad because these are different sizes, right? I mean, we've taken a four byte integer and kind of assigned it to a double. So what that's done, since we've converted an int pointer into a double pointer and then dereferenced it, that's actually gone ahead and looked four bytes past our integer and grab that memory, which is not our memory. It's not the memory we have for integer. So this is very bad and it could even cause a crash in some circumstances. It's definitely not something you want to do. I mean, we've copied that memory into a new double value block, so that's safe. So we haven't written and we, if we can't at this point, even if we do write to value, we're not going to be writing to memory that's not ours, but we definitely have read from memory that's not ours. So that's not good. Let's take a look at a more practical example. So. What I'm going to do now, of course, if you didn't want to just, just a quick note, if you didn't want to actually create a whole new variable and you just wanted to access this int as if it was a double, then you can just add an ampersand to the end of this double here, which will just reference it and not copy it into a whole new variable. And that way you will be actually editing this integer memory. So that is dangerous because if I decide to write something like zero into here, then guess what? It's actually going to write eight bytes instead of four, but we only have space for four. And this might even crash. So let's take a look at a more uh, practical example. What if I have a struct called entity and this has two variables int x, y. Now we know, or at least I, I hope you know, um, that if we have, let's just initialize this to five and eight. Um, if we have something like this in memory, then really all that struct is, is uh, like it, it is, it is made up of those two integers. It is literally those two integers and that's it. If we look at its memory, you can see we have five and eight, that's it. The struct itself does not contain any kind of padding, any kind of data, whatever. If it's an empty struct, then it has to be at least one byte. So there will be something in there because we need to be able to address that memory and we can't address it if it's not there. So we have to have at least one byte in a struct, even if it is empty. But if we have variables in there, like in X and Y, that struct is just two integers. That's all it is. There's no like extra data that says, oh, this is an entity struct. It's not how any of that works. It's just the two integers. So what we can do here is we can actually just treat this entity struct as an int array, or maybe just extract one of its integers by not even doing e dot x or e dot y. Let's take a look. So I could just say e dot x and that would give me my x variable. But what I could do also is just say, well, let's, make an array out of it. So this will be a raw array. I'll say in pointer and I'll call this, I don't know, position equals the memory address of E and then just cast that to an in pointer like that. And now if I wanted to print this out, I'll just write STDC out position zero and then comma position one like that as if it was just an array. And you can see there I have it, 5a. I mean, I'm accessing it like it was an array because I've converted it into an array, basically. I've said that this entity memory address contains the beginning of an int array, right? Or it just contains a pointer to an integer. And then I've just looked one integer ahead. Using the same kind of method, what I could do is something even crazier, perhaps. Let's just say I wanted to get that y variable out of it. Now, of course, any sane person would just write that. In fact, that's probably what I, what I would write as well. I mean, I, am, I guess I'm pretty sane. Um, but what you could do is you could get the memory address of E like that, convert it into maybe like a char pointer. Again, not sure why you would, but let's just say that you did. That is of course one byte in size. So we need to go four bytes forward like that and then convert that memory into an int pointer and then dereference that. And then we have access to Y. So let's go ahead and print this crazy piece of code like 
that and hit F5. Oh, check that out. We get eight, which is of course the Y position of the entity. But the point is what we've done here is we've just kind of just reverted to raw memory operations, something that C++ does really well, which is why it's such a powerful language. One of the big reasons why it is such a powerful language, because it has that kind of, it can manipulate memory really easily and really freely. And memory is by far one of the biggest things we actually have to deal with when we're actually programming. So whilst this code probably should never exist, like in real applications, because it's crazy. And of course, in this case, you can just use e.y. It can be very useful if you don't want to deal with kind of copying or conversions. Because again, if we wanted this as an array, well, we can't like, if you, let's just say you wanted to create, you know, I don't know, get positions or whatever as an int array. Well, how would you do that? Well, I mean, I guess like what you would have to kind of do is, well, this is not an array. So I'd have to just create like a new int array right now, because this is in a, in a function and you know, we're not taking in like some kind of memory to put that, that, that array into, we probably need to create our own array, which means we need to heap allocate it and then copy that. And I don't even want to write this code. It's disgusting. It's terribly slow. It's awful. What I could do instead is just return. Well, I don't know, memory address of X, right? Now this of, of course really depends on the user not trying to do something like position th uh, two because there is no third element and that's gonna go way past the memory. However, you can see that now what I have access to if I call e.getPositions is an actual int array with two elements in it that I can access and I haven't, I, I can also write to it so I can say uh, position zero equals two and I've changed the X coordinate of my entity but also I, you know, I haven't copied anything. I haven't copied memory redundantly. I'm just linking to the same memory. I'm just choosing a different way to actually interpret that memory. If you don't want to deal with raw casts, you can use reinterpret casts to do exactly the same thing. We will have a video uh, for C++ casts in the future. The reason I haven't done one yet is because I don't use them too often. I just use C style casts most of the time. I probably should use C++ style casts, but what are you gonna do? Anyway. That is basically type punning. It's just us being able to say, I'm gonna treat this memory I have as a different type than it actually is. And you can see we can do that really freely. All we really need to do is just get that type as a pointer and then cast it to a different pointer. And then we can dereference it if we need to and just deal with it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. Let me know what you think about type punning and this type system and why, like, why type punning is useful and why you love it so much. Or you, or you hate it, I don't know exactly what, how you feel about it, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to support this series, please uh, go to patreon.com forward slash the churno. Huge shout out as always to all my lovely supporters. This series would not be here without you guys, so thank you. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.